Yeah, Tave, New Mexico. Welcome to my channel, New Mexico Outdoors with Mountaintop Bob. For, day, for today's video, <laughs> we have hummingbirds. Shot on two days, yesterday and today. Yesterday there was only one bird at the feeder. Today there was two. I tried like the Dickens to get them both in the same film, but I was too close and my new lens <laughs> wouldn't back off quite far enough. So, we got what we got and I hope you enjoy it. So this video is about practicing with my new lens, the Sigma 150 to 600. Everything in this video was shot with that. Photographs and all. I don't think I did too bad for the first real try. I don't know why I'm getting so attached to the feathered wildlife, but I've always been a bird watcher. Anytime they were around, which was always one one feather or another. Okay, so there's two birds here today, or in the video. One has a solid white um, under underbelly, under what his throat and all is white, and a black beak. And the other one has a um, some black or something. Um, the sun hits it just right. I think it might even be pink, but it looks black to me uh, under his throat. So that's how you can distinguish the two. Both have that beautiful green back. I can't believe how well this lens is doing for me right out of the box. Okay, he's got the solid white throat, solid white bottom. There's the other guy. <laughs> can't believe the photographs I got with it. thing about YouTube and posting videos and trying to uh, put together something entertaining and enlightening always end up doing your research and learning more about something than you ever thought you ever knew or learn more about it than you did know let's see what have I learned about these guys in this little venture here The most amazing thing that amazes me is that they can fly 500 miles non-stop and on their own they can migrate from 2,500 to 3,000 miles. At some point in my life people had me convinced that they flew up and landed on the backs of geese or bur burrowed up in their feathers and hitched a ride. I believed that for a long time. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> it's not true at all. They don't need any help. There's the one with the black throat. I like him too. He's kind of cool. I'm really liking my new lens. I like taking pictures. So, uh, let's see, what else did I learn? I learned that they have a very big brain for the size of their body. It takes up that whole noggin, the whole head. <laughs> and they're real smart. They can um, recognize people. And if I keep doing this and playing with them, I might even get them to drink out of my hand. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. But 
again, this is a, my first real try with the camera and the lens. And I tried some other stuff too. I actually got some other birds, but they're not in the video. I found that I can shoot handheld and track these birds, not these guys, but the uh, barn swallows up to 250 to sometimes 300 millimeters but that 600 millimeters it ain't happening yet <laughs> somewhere in the videos that i watched about these birds they said they can do all the movements of a helicopter that compare them to helicopters i never seen a helicopter that could fly upside down all my days in the military. <laughs> okay, so we're into yesterday's, my first day with the lens and all this video and uh, photographs from here the rest of the way was my first real effort with the lens um, with the lighting and everything working with me um, I waited till the afternoon I had the light to my back the sun um, today actually the sun kind of disappeared early but I got my first uh, I got out and got my first part of the videos and photographs before that happened and was able to uh, save the day but yesterday I had good luck you can see now yesterday this video here was shot at about 20 feet away and then today's the first part of this video was shot um, which I shot today I shot it at about 15 feet about five feet closer which was kind of a mistake I didn't need to get that close meant that 150 millimeters was almost too close. So I guess this lens will focus right down to about nine feet, 10 feet, somewhere in there. Music we're listening to, by the way, is Dan Lebowski. I think is how you pronounce his name from YouTube, and I just love his music. I wish he had more. I wish there was a larger selection of music to choose from for the videos. But the stuff that I like that seems to work for me is a little bit limited. I'm gonna have to work on that. Another interesting fact is that when they lay their eggs, they're not much bigger than the holes in that little ball right there, the little yellow part, about the size of a pea. And their nest isn't much bigger than that red cone, um, about the size of a golf ball. A golf ball should fit in it. Make a new nest every year. Males and females mate one time and one time only, and then they may never see each other again in the following year. She will mate with a different male, most likely. Of course, couldn't prove that by me. I don't know how they know so much about these little guys. You can see them tiny feet. <laughs> I don't know how they would ever put a band on them or trace them, but I guess scientists have ways. So this very well could be the next to the smallest bird in the world here, and it is um, a member of the family that the smallest bird in the world lives in. <laughs> Is that right? Is that how you say that? Why don't 
was doing my research, I seen some um, hummingbirds that had tails so long that they had a hard time getting by. They couldn't fly very well. <laughs> they flew, and there was something about their breeding habits that um, the females looked for the ones that could carry that tail around and still survive. Another thing that I found interesting was their beak. I always assumed or thought or never thought about it that the beak was probably just a hollow tube that they sucked the juice up out of the flowers and the buds and the <laughs> nectar from these feeders and such. But as it turns out, they have a tongue as long as the beak and they can actually stick it out beyond the length of the beak. and it is kind of a W shape and it um, works kind of like a dog's tongue and it, it laps up the, the um, nectar from the plants and from the feeders. This photograph was taken yesterday. So it was the one with the black neck that was uh, photographed yesterday. I didn't even know that until now. Anyway, I had a lot of fun shooting this. Had a lot of fun with the new lens. I'm real happy with it. Um, I'm not uh, um, in a position to make any kind of recommendations other than to say that I like the um, Sigma 150 to 600 really well. Um, and uh, hopefully as time goes by, I'll get better with it as far as focus and the whole shot um, so but for the moment I'm extremely happy with his performance and I look forward to shooting a lot of videos for YouTube with it in the meantime thanks for watching this is Mountaintop Bob 7,500 feet up <laughs> Where the air's thin. <laughs> and confusion sets in. <laughs> See ya.